Quentin is in for more than he bargained for, both with his daughter that still calls him Quentin and his attempt to sell Spivey properties. But shout out to Shelby, showing up like a good daughter-in-law. And Merch is not only losing himself within the relationship, but also runs into a Karen that kind of sends his world spinning. What's good, y'all? It's your good sister, Erica Vane, coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another The Best Man Final Chapters video. Right here on my main channel for your good sis you love to talk TV with. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out because I think you're going to love it here as we deep dive into the final installments of the Best Man franchise. Also on Erica Bain TV 2, my second and equally popping channel, we are dropping more heat, having dope informal conversations, and just giving you more content because it's never too much, right? Now in this video, I am going to be talking about chapter number four in <laughs> the Best Man Final Chapters limited series streaming now on peacock and without further ado let's go ahead and get into it in this episode i feel like we saw a slower pace but still a good amount of things happening there is a ton of story building happening in this episode versus like explosive revelations or um pivots i'm gonna start with like the smallest stuff first so Robin, Miss Robin, girl, you know I have been rooting for you. Um, we were all rooting for you. But not you getting all flirty with the Forge and Forest Man, honey. Her new produce guy is basically checking a lot of boxes for her and giving her energy and inspiration and joy by proximity. <laughs> <laughs> just because he carries it in his spirit and it's giving you're finding something that you possibly could be finding within your relationship outside of it honey and it's giving you joy which i ain't mad at i believe in platonic relationships but everything about this does not read platonic at least from your end miss robin and i love that <laughs> I love that Candace tries to like note it, but she has her own things going on. So she's not really pushing the issue, but she definitely does caution Robin to like keep it cute. And again, we are another episode in and I am getting more and more evidence that makes me believe that Harper and Robin are not going to make it. She's up here ready to fornicate with the foraging man. I mean, no, she's not actually trying to do all that just yet, but she is completely obsessed really really enthralled with this man's aura like how can harper compete with that while he's trying to bust out his little serious book the last time we saw her speak about energies and the infectiousness of it was when she was reading a couple of lines from his coming book and she felt like okay this is the quote she said when you show your heart like this all i ever want to do is be where that energy is Mm -hmm. that's the one and only time I've seen even a semblance of this whole energy conversation that she's having about the little produce man with Harper and we haven't heard of it since so I don't know if he's still giving it to her like this or still putting her in a space of inspiration um the same way that those lines on that page did that day long story short Harper um Robin Y'all's marriage, I think, is in trouble, I fear. But again, very small points to the episode in a whole. You know, they are a month in to move into that new brownstone. She's become acclimated. This was a compromise that's seemingly working for her because she got to keep her kitchen in Harlem. And now she has her all-black team, including this guy that she gets produce from and has become enamored with. So clearly, we're going to double back to Lil' Miss Robin in future episodes. Candace. Candace is having issues with her dissertation and specifically her advisor completely hating it. So she gets into this very world renowned um, writing professor. Um, she gets into his class and then is able to ask for his opinion about her dissertation or the paper that she currently has that she builds towards that dissertation. And he actually likes it and agrees. And then by the end of the episode, she wants to have to wants to switch over to have him be her advisor. So most of Candace's story in this episode is really just about where she's at with her PhD journey, as well as running their schools and all of the, the stuff that kind of like has come up 
for her as she pursues her ambition and by default that has pushed off onto merch more like taking care of the kids and being a supportive person and he talks with Quentin earlier in the episode about like not really knowing where his place is or knowing where he fits anymore and it's not even just her life it's their life which is definitely cause for concern now aside from merch having these feelings which he has alluded to from the very start of the series we also get to see him have a, a Karen encounter in this episode which launches us into the conversation around anger frustration um specifically tied to our blackness and how our blackness is mishandled and mistreated within this country within this society and then what do we do with our feelings that come from when we are you know racially stigmatized disrespected dismissed and more um merch has a moment where he actually runs into the woman who took his cab right in front of his girls and like called the po- like the police were walking by but she called the t- police's attention to him and they basically made it so it seemed like he really needed to let her have the cab he runs into her later on in the episode and then we get to see him run through three scenarios where every single one of them um resulted in all the white people around turning on him and him being persecuted for actually calling her out for the bs that she had did previously so he chooses to not actually say anything not actually do anything but that does nothing for the anger and the frustration that's still building and brewing in him now i did really enjoy the quick little moment that he had with dr templeton at the um investor party that they had at their house because he was able to speak to him black man to black man and to talk about um how important it is to find a way to channel the energy that is spurred from racism in this country spurred from white people white people in and to use it in a way that doesn't put you in a position to lose everything that doesn't put you in a position to give them the win that they're actually looking for by exploiting us our anger and um In some in some ways, our desire to to hold space and be respected. So I thought that that was really cool. I like the conversation that it started. And Merch's character is going into a very nuanced place after this episode, which I'm really really excited to see what the conversation will look like with his character moving forward like what does a black man do who is in this really great marriage that still has some areas of opportunity where he feels like he's losing himself or he's not a priority and he's not getting the attention that he deserves and then he goes out into the world and is being persecuted and disrespected in the ways that he is and then all he wants to do is provide protect and show up for his family and be met with feelings of love like what happens then and I'm really excited to see what they do with his character moving forward because again I feel like it's a very nuanced conversation to have and for it to be merch basically the the most amicable negro out of the whole group I think this is kind of brilliant now in other negro news (laughs) Lance thinks that his passion is to go back to the football field and it takes A few great runs, a nice catch, but then being not clean on his ass to realize that he does not actually need to take his 48-year-old behind back onto anybody's football field. But the coach has another idea for him, and that is for him to come and be an assistant coach, which seems like a very perfect fit. And hopefully it is a position that's going to set him up to be able to handle the news, the conversation, the... I don't know really what to say and how to describe this. So I apologize if I described this incorrectly. However, LJ Lance Jr. is non-binary, comes out to Godmother Jordan and also is prepping to come out to his father. So hopefully becoming a new coach, realizing um, certain dreams change and shift and you can discover new purposes and passions as Jordan mentioned he will be able to adapt and adjust quickly and not lean into his alpha male stigmatized personality that we have known him to have hopefully he can show up for LJ in the way that LJ needs I think that this coming out story is a very pleasant surprise Um, I did not expect it at all so when they popped up on the screen serving this great look i was like oh 
now we talking now we're really getting into the nitty-gritty there's so much happening again this episode it wasn't a ton of action but there was a lot of nuanced conversations being started and in story set to be built in this episode which makes it one of the strongest ones thus far in my opinion hey y'all back for another editor's note really quick just to speak to a few blips that i had in this particular video misgendering lj a few times i actually left these things in because it's at this point in the series that um it's revealed about their character and the point that i want to make and leaving even my missteps or mistakes in is that sometimes that's going to happen especially when this is new information and a change has to happen but the moment that someone like communicates how they identify and how they would prefer to be referred to it's our job then to make an effort and have all of the intention to honor that which is something that i am doing and as we go on you'll see that it doesn't really happen again because i'm very much so focused on um never misgendering anybody that's not something that i want to do however i left my little blips in just because it happens and i apologize for it and you can too like if you're if you ever experience something like this i thought that it was really cool and what they're doing with lance and lance jr's story in this conversation because it is basically modeling the do's and the don'ts for like how to handle this as it pops up and this is something that's a little bit more mainstream a little bit more forward facing now like i'm sure it's been happening for years and years and years but we haven't been talking about it in media and media is very powerful in how we can actually help people through some of the things that might be the toughest things for them to deal with or things that they just are ignorant to or don't want to accept or whatever i think that lance again he is showing in a lot of ways what not to do but then also teaching what to do in reference to like not doing what he's doing and i just left my little books in there because it's important to, to show that they will happen um but we all can do the right thing and take better steps forward in honoring one another and respecting each other and that's all i just wanted to pop in to say that okay back to the video i hope y'all are enjoying now when we're talking about kids show uh, Lil Miss Kennedy, Lil Miss Shelby and Quentin is a nepotism baby waiting to happen. And don't get me wrong, I don't have anything against black ne nepotism babies. But girl, you also like light, light, light skin and you running amok because you have no sense of... Um, no real sense of self-awareness she has a certain level of entitlement that can be dangerous to black people operating in the affluent spaces that she's operating in and then also it just makes you a brat boo it's not cute nobody wants to be around this so hopefully quentin can get off his guilt salt box and actually be a daddy to this girl and not just a friend like shelby is trying to get him to do because he keeps buying chanel bags and this that and the third getting tricked by this girl basically giving her any and everything that she wants not actually being a parent and still in certain values that she's going to need to be able to move forward whether she has daddy and mommy money or not Ugh, kennedy is annoying and i hate that for her so hopefully q gets it together however she is definitely a little shelby aside from like shelby has a switch that she can flip and we saw that in last episode with her switching in her in, into her intellectual side and then in this episode her showing up and being about her family like quentin and, and his father are not seeing eye to eye in reference to selling spivey properties and she feels like it's something else going on so she forces him to go and pop up at his house and they find out that he's living in disarray all the people that he talked about in reference to like the the concierge and the cook and the this and the that nobody is there and the father is living amongst mess dirt and debris and it would not have been discovered if shelby didn't push for it and she even calls him dad and then that turns into them staying as a family to help him get things organized and the clean up and i'm like shelby i love this for you because while you was giving real housewife bad bitch stees you are so much more than that and i love to see how they are allowing her character to grow and evolve and while we get the infusion of who we knew her to be in best man holiday as well as who she was set up to be in the original best man this iteration is definitely um a more fleshed out woman but again built on those foundations and i think it's brilliant now jordan 
Little Miss Jordan might find love after all. And it's this episode that I'm like, okay, maybe it's not going to be Jordan and Harper because little Mr. Demetrius is applying hella pressure, y'all. Not him calculating that she got 56 free minutes in the morning and he wants to spend it on a rooftop in Brooklyn looking at the sunrise eating breakfast with her. Where do they make these men at? Besides in the writer's room of great television shows because y'all need to present yourselves. What are you waiting for? I just don't understand. <sighs> While part of it feels like a little too good to be true with Demetrius popping out of nowhere, we learned that he actually broke her heart back in college and went through a marriage and is now going through a divorce because he never wanted kids and the wife wanted kids, yada, yada, yada. Sir, you dropped the ball. So part of me can't root for you just because of that. But she, by golly, Miss Molly, you are coming with it. So we give you a couple snaps and 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 claps for at least not coming incorrect you are 100 percent coming correct sir and we appreciate it if you're enjoying this video be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and if this is your first time listening to your good sis watching one of my videos right here on Eric Man tv hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any other video moving forward especially my the best man final chapter videos I think that's all that went down in this episode, y'all. Hmm. Aside from also talking about Candace being very, very serious about using plant-based meds versus traditional meds and taking the stance personally of like Keisha has anxiety and she's treating it with plant-based medicine but Merch makes a comment early on in the episode about how we need to stick to the devil that we know in reference to tra traditional pharmaceuticals and she's just like nah they knew that conversation is going to be coming back around in full force and on a bigger scale I actually can't wait to see that and yeah those are my thoughts for episode four. I hope y'all are enjoying the breakdowns thus far. Drop down in the comment section now because it's your turn. Let me know what you thought about episode four so that we can have a conversation and keep it going. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.